Well, I want to tell you about a funny episode we had this week when we had the police round. I was out. My wife sent me a message to say that there were two plain clothes police officers had called round to say that they thought our internet address had been used for malicious purposes and they wanted to come in and help us with passwords and my wife was suspicious as you can imagine anyway she said no I'm sorry not at the moment my husband's not in he deals with computer things and they left us a letter so when I got back I looked at it it said North Yorkshire Police, which is our local police force. There was a name, a number, an incident number, and so on. And I said to my wife, well, got to be a 90% chance this is fraud. So I rang the police non-emergency number, which here in the UK is 101, and I spoke to the control centre for North Yorkshire Police. And actually they said, no, that's a genuine officer. It's a genuine case number. And yes, it seems they think your internet address has been used for malicious purposes. So I called them and spoke to the officer and she said, yes, we think that you've been infected with something like a Mirai bot. Okay. And the way that works is it infects some fairly simple device on your network, on your home network a doorbell camera would be typical and then it sort of sits there waiting for instructions and when it gets instructions what it will do generally is to send messages out to some particular internet address somewhere in the cloud but the criminals they will infect hundreds of thousands of devices and they might all just ping this one address to give them a denial of service. So it's like having hundreds of thousands of people trying to log on to their website, the target website, all at the same time. And it can either cause the site to stop working or it can actually bring it down and collapse it. So this was a bit alarming. Um, now we had had a couple of internet problems, sort of in slightly intermittent internet and when I'd done speed tests everything were fine I uh, was fine I spoke to my internet provider they said no everything's fine but it still seemed a bit strange and the police officer gave me a link to a couple of sites and I'll put those links into the description one of them tells you what your internet address is so I mean the IP address and the other will tell you if any uh, bad activity has been flagged against your internet address. So I did that and I found that from mid-September to mid-October on 34 occasions <laughs> our internet address had been flagged as malicious by 17 different agencies. Oh, but the activity stopped sometime around mid-October and the report said probably this internet address is no longer active as a malicious actor so the police officer was quite switched on about these things and she told me that this Mirai bot it actually um, if it can find a way into one of your devices will sit there in memory so when I say in memory I mean random access memory so if you turn the device off and turn it on again that um, infection will disappear until the next time it's reinfected it sits there and it will just sit there waiting for instructions from some malicious actor in on the internet telling it what to do and it can only do fairly dumb things but your security on Android Google Android if you have an Android phone or Android TV your security on Apple iOS, your security on Microsoft Windows, like on a PC, for example, uh, is very strong. But the security on the Internet of Things devices, like doorbells and fridges and coffee makers and all those other things, CCTV cameras, can be quite weak. And therefore, they're quite susceptible. And 
particularly if they're running some kind of operating system. So I've mentioned those others, but a very, uh, an operating system in very wide use is called Linux. And you might not have heard of it because as a retail customer, you probably wouldn't encounter it. But a lot of industrial machines and servers and all this stuff that goes on in the internet runs on Linux um, because it's open source for a start. So uh, it's, it's very cheap. In fact, I think it might even be free. <clears throat> so uh, what can you do about it? I mean, well, one thing is make sure that you when you buy a doorbell camera or something like that, make sure you don't stay with the default password. Always change those passwords. Um, the way this kind of works is it's a bit like, say you live in a bit of a rough neighborhood and you've got people driving around, uh, villains driving around looking for an open window somewhere to break in. And you employ a security guard and you try and dissuade these bad people from you know breaking into your house and it's a bit like that with your home internet you have a router and in that router there's a firewall and the firewall is a bit like the security guard um, but there are certain times when people from outside to, can get into your network particularly if you've without even knowing set up something called port forwarding rules and that's a bit like giving uh, a free pass <laughs> To some villain to go past your security guard uh, without even checking and I uh, don't want to get into too much detail but some devices when you plug them in uh, we had a couple of CCTV cameras when you plug them in they talk to your router and by plug and play they set up port forwarding rules which means that any traffic from the internet which arrives at your front door, so to speak, would be able to go directly to that device without going past the security guard, the firewall. And that's an opportunity for bad actors to load uh, criminal software onto your devices without you even knowing. So, unfortunately, we had a couple of those rules set without us even knowing. We had a new router in September and it came with plug and play on by default which is a bit naughty really and these two rules were set up which gave free access from the outside internet straight to those devices now i don't know it was those devices that were infected in fact even though i don't know for sure what what devices were infected um, but i turned off plug and play and those uh, port forwarding rules were deleted um, so, yes, a salutary, a, salutary, a salutary tale. Now, I guess the police decided that we, were, we weren't the typical profile for, uh, you know, internet criminals. Uh, <laughs> they were really coming, you know, to follow it up and give us advice. And I think that's really quite reassuring. I mean, I know the police often get criticism, but I was really quite impressed. And when I spoke to the... Uh, the police officer lady, woman, young, younger than me, I won't say young woman, but younger than me. Um, yeah, she was you know, pretty switched on to these things. And once she realized I'd got some background in this topic, we pretty quickly got on to you know, a lot of detail and helped me understand and uh, wake me up really to the risk of it all. So, you know, what can I say? She said that the previous home that they'd visited that morning, it was an absolutely classic case. They'd had a doorbell camera, but left it set on the default password. Well, that's, that's no password at all, is it? And if there's any way of um, a criminal message getting in onto your network and finds that, and they, they will just be set up. These, these, are done, these things are done on an industrial scale. So somewhere in a data center, there's just a program running, which is trying every internet address at random and every port a port is a bit like having an open window so having a you know trying every port uh, and particularly if they're targeting specific devices where you know millions of, of a particular type of doorbell camera have been deployed it's just a numbers game isn't it so i just thought i'd tell you about that um, if you want to 
I don't want to frighten anybody, but if you want to use those couple of links I put in there, and for you know nearly everybody that tries that, they won't find any reference against their IP address. Um, but a few might, a few might, and you might be surprised. Who knows? And you, you know, it might avoid a call from the police. Ah. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> I'm always really careful, you know, I pay for my virus checker subscriptions and I'm ever so careful about stuff. But, I, you know, that's on computers. Uh, I haven't thought about all these kind of, you know, low end devices. So, uh, yeah. Right. Well, that's it. I hope that educates somebody. Um, hmm. OK, well, thanks for watching.